welcome one and welcome the other two of you. Appreciate you being here. I'm John Zadar. This is On Top and Hot, where we like to discuss hot penny stocks. I trade penny stocks every day. These are stocks under five bucks that you can find on any market. And I'm always looking for a hot penny stock to share with you at the end of the day. Well, today I want to share some hot information with you so you can make more money with these hot stocks that we're talking about. Today, we are going to be talking about scalping. What the heck? No, 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 no. Not that. Though similar, we are looking at taking a little off the top of a stock. There's a lot of information out there about scalping, folks. You can do some research, and I suggest that you do. But I'm going to give you a fair warning. There's a lot of different strategies and a lot of philosophies about scalping. And there's a lot of controversy on what's the best way to do it. So it can be confusing. Even looking at their pictures and diagrams doesn't make it totally clear sometimes. However, today, I'm going to share with you my own personal strategy that I've just learned from trading. This isn't anything that's come from a YouTube video that I'm passing on to you. This is what I do. This is what works for me, tried and tested. And as far as I'm concerned, it's very easy to grasp and it's very easy to do. Now, the most important fact of scalping I want you to get from all of this, it is the most successful trading strategy used on the market, with most scalpers winning more than 50% of their trades. And a lot of them are getting over 70% winnings. That's what we're talking about here, folks, getting more and more winnings. It's not about how much you take. The reason scalp traders typically have higher degree of accuracy is because it's a lot easier to project where a stock's going to go in five minutes than it is five hours, five days, five months. So your risk is really limited because you're only in the stock for a little amount of time. Most scalps don't last more than 30 minutes. Most are under 10 minutes. A lot are just a few minutes. And don't be surprised if they happen in under a minute. Absolutely possible, folks, here. And let's face it, the more wins you have, whether they be big or small, the more confidence you're going to be building in yourself. Now, what exactly is scalping? Well, scalping is a fast-paced day trading strategy that involves getting in and out of stocks quickly, but a particular type of stock, a stock that has strong volume, has very strong liquidity. And that's what's key here, folks, liquidity. It's already in motion. It's already moving. It's easy to figure out where something is going if it's moving. A parked car, you have no idea where that's going to go until it starts moving. Think of a water hose, perfect for liquidity. Water's coming out of it. When you see that stream in motion flowing, you can project in your mind where it's going to go to. Pretty close. But if the water is off, when it comes on, do you have any clue how far it's going to go or even what direction? None. So liquidity is primary. We need lots of volume. So we're looking for stocks that have breaking news. You're going to get lots of volume with that. There's going to be lots of stocks out there that already have momentum that have been running for days. You can jump onto any one of those. We're also going to be looking for stocks that have breakout setups. There's lots of patterns you can see on a board and know that six, seven out of 10 times it runs after you see this pattern. One of my most favorite patterns, and if you know me, you know what I'm going to say, the atypical breakout. This thing breaks out six, seven, eight times out of 10, and you get a nice run out of it. That is when you got your 200-day SMA coming down fast and furious. Your price is underneath it. They're both falling. Then your 200 starts to level out and go flat and get its weight off of the price. So now the price can turn up and it starts to climb. And when it's just about ready to cut through that 200, it picks up momentum and shoots. That's one of my favorite setups. Somebody else's may be a double bottom. A double bottom looks like a W where it hits at the bottom twice. W for winner. At the end of the W, it normally runs. No, not all the time, but more often than not. And that's what we're playing. Probabilities. You see things in motion, go in a certain direction. Chances are it's going to continue in that direction until it hits a speed bump or a traffic light, something that slows it down. And that's what we focus in on. 
those speed bumps, those traffic lights, those signals that are on every single chart, find them and you can plan your trade to get in and get out with gains over and over again with very little risk. The whole premise behind scalping can be summed up like this. The more wins you take, the more money you make. It is not about how much you're taking. And that's what most of us are trying to do. Take as much as we can get. We are looking for the ceiling. We're trying to figure out how high it's going to shoot. That's a loser's game. That's fogging up your brain. That's information we really can't plan around because there's no definite answers. We need to know where we're going to get in, where we're going to get out, where we set our stop loss so that we can figure out our profit, our loss, and compare it. Is your risk ratio worth it? Most scalp are about five to 10 cents profit per trade. Now they can be bigger. We can find gaps of up to 20 cents or more depending on the price of the stock. But the average scalp is between five and 10 cents. Now let's say you're dealing with a thousand shares. You get into a play at 50 cents, you get out at 60 cents, you made 10 cents per share, thousand shares, you just made $100. You were in that trade for seven minutes because it was already moving and it just kept going and you got it in and out guaranteed money. And we do this over and over again. We wait for the right setup, patience, get in at the prime moment when it is taking off. We get out where it may start to slow down, stop or change direction and forget about the if, bands or buts. And we just take our gains. So what we're doing here is we're going to be taking smaller, safer gains over and over and over again. And we do this by playing strong, probable setups on the charts that have strong movement probability. And we're going to grab the movement. We're not looking for all of it, just a portion of it. We only need a piece of pie to satisfy us. And we are limiting how long we're in that trade. And that's the biggest thing, folks. Anything can happen while you're in there. So if you limit how long you're in a play, you're limiting your risk by a grand amount. And we're only in these stocks for a few minutes and then we're out, right or wrong. If we lose, we're out. If we win, we're out. And the last thing I'm going to mention before we go look at some prime examples, a lot of scalpers will stick with one stock through the whole day. You find a stock that has volume pouring in, lots of volatility, doesn't matter if it's going up or down, there's bounces in both directions and you can play those bounces all day long with one stock. Now over in the Discord group, we don't do that because we got lots of members, lots of people trading different stocks. So we bring in a bunch of hot charts and we got lots of plays going on through the day. So again, I do invite you to come to the Discord group. Give it a try, folks. It's on the free member page. What have you got to lose? All right, let's go take a look at some prime examples I can share with you now. So let's do some charting now on my free trading platform, Thinkorswim. We are going to chart some prime examples of scalping. The reason I call them prime examples is because they're tried and proven. We're looking at charts we were actually trading on Friday and Thursday in the Discord group. So we're not looking at probable plays. These were actual plays we did and worked. So they're great examples to share with you. So the first one we're going to take a look at here is BNRG. She had a hot day Friday. All started Thursday. She had a big rip. I think she had news come out. She had a big rip here. She got up high and did not fall. She went sideways. We had a big strong pierce come down here. It looked like she was pushing off of that 200 to stay up. She went sideways and then we were going to watch her right here because we knew there was a lot, lot of activity. Now keep in mind, we did not see any of that. We only had the clear part to consider. What else we didn't see were any of these yellow lines. Nothing was here when we came to this chart. It's empty. Well, you need these horizontal lines on your charts. <laughs> yes, you do. These are SNRs, supports and resistances. You cannot set up a trade to scalp or really any trade unless you know where the stock is going to slow down and speed up. These are speed bumps. Better yet, think of them as traffic lights. You approach a traffic light, one of three things can happen. It can stay green and you can just go right on through cruising without any hindrance. 
or it could turn yellow, warning, you start banging your head up against that SNR, or worse yet, it could go red and you end up falling, coming back down. Well, what we do is avoid that decision. We get past the first traffic light. Well, what happens when you're past the traffic light? Nothing. You go, <laughs> right? So we're past the traffic light, not under it. When we're past it, we get in right here. When we approach the next traffic light, we don't know what's going to happen. I'm not going to deal with it. I'm going to get out right here before the traffic light. We don't stop underneath it. We stop before it to make our turns. So right up underneath them is where we get out. Right up on top of them is where we get in. We take that stuff in the middle. Think of it as a sandwich. We want the meat. On top is a piece of bread. On the bottom is a piece of bread. And you got to come up off of that SNR on top of the bread. That's where you come in. We don't want any of the bread. So if it's at 50 cents, you may want to come in at 52, 53, somewhere around there when it is starting to move. When you see she's starting to go, she's past the light, get in, ride her on up. Now, yes, these are small gains, right? We like to think of these as getting on base, hitting a single. You know, baseball teams have home run hitters. Everybody loves a home run hitter knock that bad boy out of the park. But you know what's funny? When it comes time to vote for the most valuable player, rarely ever is the home run king the guy they vote. You know who they do vote in? The guy that gets on first base the most often. The guy that can hit a single over and over again. Why? Because you cannot score, you cannot win, until you get a man on first base so he can get around to score. Now think about this. If you had a baseball team that had nobody that could hit home runs, heck, they couldn't even hit a triple, even a double. This team stunk, right? They could only get on first base. Everybody, that's all they could do is just get on first base. Well, you know what? That would be an unbeatable team. Nobody could beat that team if everybody could just get on first base. And that's all we're doing here, folks, is just getting on first base. Get on first base again, you move the man on first to second. Just keep doing that. Now, let's take a look here. We see that this is moving. We've got our supports and resistances. Now, I did make a video not too long ago on supports and resistances, so I'm not going to go into this too much. But suffice it to say, if you're looking at a chart and you don't see any prices above your price, well, you can't get any supports and resistances. Supports and resistances come from where the price changes direction. If it comes down and it hits a price point and bounces back up, or it comes up and hits that point and comes back down. That one point seems to be very pertinent to the stock. That becomes a support and resistance where the stock likes to slow down and speed up. So we grab those by finding the butts and the ends of the wicks where they all line up and we draw our lines right there. So that's what we're using as our guide to get in and out of these plays. So you're looking at a stock, you say, okay, I see she bounced right here. She's coming up. Now, now we are, we could look at this on the one minute, but I get the feeling I may not get all of it. Let's see if we can get it all. Yes, we can. Very good. So we've got our supports and resistances here. We see she has been riding across this support very, very well. Bell rings. She takes a dip very quickly. Man, we probably didn't have time for this one, but you get the point here. Once she got up to, this is at $1.35. Once she hit $1.38, you should have gotten in. You know, get in, ride this bad boy up, and boom, before she hits the top here, which is at 167, so we're going from 135 to 167. Folks, you're looking at like 32 cent spread. Wow, folks. So you bought a thousand shares down here at 138. You get out up here at 160. That's 22, that's $220 you would have made on that play. Getting out early. We don't care what's going to happen after we get out. When you hitchhike, have you ever hitchhiked? 
I've hitchhiked a lot. And God, it's so important to me to get to where I want to get to. I'm at point A. I want to get to point B. Well, here comes a car from who knows where. Stops, picks me up, takes me my 10 miles and drops me off. Then he continues on his way, right? And I'm standing there. Do I get all bummed out because he's going on somewhere else? He's continuing to journey and I'm stuck here. Am I upset that he didn't get off with me? No, <laughs> none of that matters. I got what I wanted. What he does after he drops me off is none of my business and I don't care. Don't worry about that. But some of you are saying, but doggone it, there's more money to be made. Well, let's talk about that because you're right. Let's say you got in down here. She comes back down. She bounces, comes back up. Holy cow. I think I'm going to get in here at 142. Okay. That sounds good. She's riding up. Now here she comes looking really strong. You don't see any yellow lights. Darn sure don't see a red light. Looks green to you. You're tempted to break your rules. You planned on getting in at 142. You planned on getting out at 165. Here comes 165, but it looks like a green light. You don't want to get out. Here's what you do. Make an addendum to your plan. Sell 50% at this point, 165. Take those gains, stick to your plan, but now let the rest ride. You see a green light, so go to the next light. Go to the next light. You come on up. She is climbing. She's doing good. She approaches that next light, a couple pennies away from it. It is at $1.91. You want to come in, I don't know, a buck 88, a buck 87, somewhere around there. If it looks like a green light, sell half. You had 50% left, so sell 25%. That would be what you had left. Just sell half at the next one. Now take the next bit of stock you have to the next one and keep doing that if you see green lights. But if you see any hazard, you see any curves on your SMAs, you see a red bar coming into the picture, folks, just take your 100%, get out. Now, as I said, a lot of people like to stick with the same stock. You get a good run out of it. Why leave it? There may be more to come, right? So you stick around until it looks like it's finally milked out. Then you go look for another one. We did. We found another one. We had PSNY. Now I want to back this up. Let's see here. This one is an excellent play, folks. This was uh, back on Wednesday, I think we were looking at this, and we noticed that there was a pattern. Now, we have more of the pattern now since more time has gone by, and it really excites me. You may want to watch this stock, ticker PSNY. So, first thing I did when I came here was to go out and get all my supports and resistances so I can set up my plan. Once I have my plan, the price is down here, I start calculating. I say, all right, we're down here at 87 cents. I want to come up to maybe, well, let's make it 90 cents. I'm going to get in at 90 and I'm going to plan to get out here. Well, if it's a green light, you're going to go to the next one. Well, look what we had here, folks. One, two, three, four. Four days of big moves, first thing in the morning, and they didn't just move one, they went two gaps, two lights they went to. Folks, these were solid gains every single day. Now, these were only going from 88 cents up to, uh, let's call it a buck. So, you got about 12 cents there. So, you're looking at about $100. But it, it's $100, folks, over and over again that you could be getting in the morning. Doesn't look like she does diddly squat the rest of the day. But in the morning, you could come in here. Now, let's see if we can get a picture on this one so we can get a close-up. All right, so we've got our supports and resistances. We see pre-market. She's bounced and hit down here. Now, remember, these stocks on the NASDAQ, the New York Stock Exchange, you can get into these pre-market. You don't have to wait for the bloody bell. If you see that she's down here bouncing and it looks like she's coming up, get in. And you're going to see bigger bounces pre-market, aftermarket because there's less volume and the stock moves differently during these periods of time. You get bigger bounces faster on less volume. So, you know, you got to take all the chart into consideration. Look at all these SMAs. All of them are pushing up. All of them. So, 
once she got on top here and I see all my SMAs are right up underneath her pushing, I knew she was going to climb. So you could get into this, ride her up and look, she fell just a little shy, right? So that's why we don't go all the way to the top. We don't stop under a traffic light when it's red. We are in front of it. So we get out in front of it. Then it came down. Now, if you missed that, but you saw it and you're saying, geez, I think this may be ready to go. My 200 day MA is flat. My other SMAs are climbing. We've just landed flat on top of this support. It looks probable. This looks probable. So as soon as she started to come up again, you're going to want to get in. We're here at a buck eight. You may want to get in at a buck nine, a buck 10 and ride her up. Now this is strong, real strong. So you may want to sell half right here and ride it the rest of the way up, especially if you have all that history in your face saying in the morning, I go this far all the time. So you may want to just stretch it a little bit and ride this out. And this is what we look for in all of our charts. We are looking for positioning around the support, around the resistance. We are looking for stocks that have all the SMAs pointed up. You want to have strong oscillators. When a chart has everything pointed up, you're looking at a strong chart. When the price is around an SMA, uh, uh, a support or resistance, you are ready for a play. Underneath is where you will be looking at the play saying, geez, if this breaks through, I'm going to want to be ready. So you actually start watching these plays underneath the support and resistance. You get ready. You get your order set up. Open it up. You're down here at 227. You want to get in. Let's see. The support is at 230. I plan on getting in at 232. I see she's bounced at 232 before. So I was going to try to get it 232. So you get your order set up. You have your finger set up. Now you can put it in there and you could try to buy it now, but I would wait. I would wait and have my finger on the trigger. And when she starts to climb, click it boys, get that buy in there and then watch it. Don't go to the bathroom. Don't talk to anybody. Don't read any chat. Watch your play. It's a few minutes of your time. You're going to dedicate to this. It's like driving. You don't take your eyes off the road and we are going to ride this bad boy up and we are going to sell 100% here. Unless you believe it's a green light, then you sell 50% ride it the rest of the way up. Now, when she fell here, you may have panicked, but look what you have going on. We're on top of a very strong MA, the 200. We are also bouncing on the 20, which is crossing the 200. It's climbing. Our 50s climbing. Our 200 hauls climbing. So the chance of a bounce here was pretty good. You could have rolled this up and again, you would want to get out before it reaches the top because there's a lot of pullbacks before she reaches the top. But the safest play is to take one gap, one gap base. Don't try to stretch it to a double. Just get in there just above your support. Get out just below the resistance. Grab your meat folks. Get those single base hits over and over again. All we are ever looking for is for stocks that are getting around their supports and resistances and the SMAs pointed up. All of our oscillators and SMAs pointed up with the price around a support and resistance that has at least a five to 10 cent spread is a play you want to look at. If it's got volume, if it's got volatility, that's a stock to be considering. We're not worried about what's going to happen five hours, five days, five months down the road. We want to get gains in a short amount of time, get in, get out, pocket your cash. Now, folks, when we're setting up our plays, you also want to set up a stop loss. A stop loss is a safety net that you're going to put underneath. Down here, you start looking at the play. You want to get in. You set your price to get in. Well, at that time is when you set your stop loss. Stop loss is going to be underneath your support, but not too close. Because look here, how many times did it come down to 241? from 245. That was four cents. One, two, three. 
That, that was 243. So there's four times it came under. If your stop loss was anywhere here, you'd have been stopped out of this play. So this may have a habit of doing that. So you may have to get your stop loss down lower. And that can be a problem because here we're going from 244 to 265 minus two cents on each side. That's four cents. So we're looking at 20, 16 cents. That's not bad. We got 16 cents on that spread. That would be our profit margin. We're thinking about putting in uh, from 245 down to what? 240? Well, to be safe, that's really where you need to go if you don't want to be stopped out because a stop loss is just an order waiting to happen and you're not there to do it. If the price falls down to that price, boink, it just sells automatically. Safety net. But she could bounce back. So we're looking at a nickel down, which would be $50 loss on a thousand shares to a hundred and twenty dollar profit. Whew, that's kind of tight. Now, what a lot of people do, folks, is they leverage these sort of plays because there's so little risk. You're in the stock very short amount of time, so very little can happen outside of your purview. You can see what's going on. You can get out anytime you want. You have a safety net. You have a plan. If you know this is going to probably go 16 cents, you may want to buy 10,000 shares. You may want to use your margins. Margins are what you get if you have margin accounts. It's a credit card. They give you a certain amount of credit based on how much assets you have in your portfolio. And you can use that to buy stock. It's credit. And as soon as you cash out, you give it back to them just that fast. I've never used margins because I just don't trust the gambling feeling with the credit. Things can go wrong and I could end up being in deep debt. But my point is... These plays have so little risk, they are the most successful trades on the market and they succeed because of our plans. We know our entries, we know our exits, we have stop losses and we're not going to change our mind. If we change our mind, it's only because we are selling half underneath and letting the rest ride to the next one where we might get all the way out or at least sell another half. All right, folks, selling is what's most important here. Do not get greedy. Take your gains. It's not how much you take. It's how often you take it, folks. Winning is the strategy. Now, in saying that, there's one last thing I need to say. If you're on a cash account, you have no limit on day trades. You can do as many day trades as you possibly can with one exception. You have to have cash to back up all of your plays. If you buy and sell today, the money you just got back, you cannot spend today. You have to wait till tomorrow for transactions to clear. It's like clearing a check. It takes one day to record this transaction. So as long as you have money, you can get into another play. Once you run out of money, your game's over for today. Tomorrow will be a new day and you'll have more money to do this again. If you are dealing with margins, you have three day trades a week that you can do. If you break that rule, they're serious. They'll stop you for trading for like six months or something like that. I do believe if you have $25,000 in a margin account, then you can start day trading without limits. Don't quote me on that because I've never had margins. I really don't know what the situation is for them. So go do some more due diligence. Go look at charts Start laying out your supports and resistances, finding those wide spreads. But remember, the only stocks you want to look at are the stocks that have strong volume, strong volatility. All the lines are going up. I'm excited. I'm ready to trade and we got a holiday today. <laughs> Thanks for your time, folks. We'll catch up with you again soon. Bye-bye.